The B-Wing is probably one of the most effective bomber classes that the New Republic or the Rebels have ever created. It was one of the largest and most heavily armed Starfighter bombers. According to legend, it was so powerful that when Empire spies heard of it, they were so worried about its firepower that there was attempts to steal the blueprints of the ship. The standard configuration armament for the ship goes as follows. Three light ion cannons, one heavy laser cannon, one twin turbo blaster, and two proton torpedo launchers. It was also one of the most difficult starfighters to pilot as well. The two biggest contributors to this fact is the shape and size of the ship and the gyroscopic rotating cockpit module for the pilot. So in simplistic terms, if you roll the X-Wing to the right, the pilot within the cockpit also rotates right with the ship. But in a B-Wing, if you decide to rotate the ship to the right, the entire exterior of the ship rotates, while you yourself, the pilot, stays exactly where they are. This can make it pretty difficult for pilots to distinguish the position of their ship when doing tricky maneuvers. And with the news that the B-Wing and the TIE Defender are coming to Star Wars Squadrons, today we're going to be exploring just how the developers at EA Motive are going to pull this off and essentially answer how on earth is the B-Wing going to work in Star Wars Squadrons. So without any further delay, let's get right into the video. So let's look at previous informational sources of the B-Wing in Star Wars. Due to the modular design of the B-Wing, it makes it very easy to justifiably explain some of the features of the ship. So for example, the scene in Star Wars Rebels where the B-Wing comes in on the Arcason and completely destroys it with its laser beam kind of coincides pretty well with the mean beam in Star Wars Squadrons. And with all four laser cannons easily able to be swapped out, it pretty much explains how the ion or standard laser cannons would work in Star Wars Squadrons. All right, well, that was easy enough to explain. That's the easy part of this video done. Let's tackle the hardest part of this video and explain how EA Motive is going to work the gyroscopic cockpit into Star Wars Squadrons. So the best way around this is probably to look at old Star Wars video games that featured the B-Wing and how their gameplay differs between one another. The two best games that can answer this question for us is Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader for a third person's perspective and X-Wing Alliance for a first person perspective. We'll also be able to look at some Battlefront 1 and 2 mods that put the B-Wing into the game, but they probably won't give us a true concrete idea of how they'd work. Okay, so first up, let's look at Rogue Squadron 2. On a third person perspective, we almost don't see the gyro cockpit in action. When you look at the ship on its exterior only, it always looks like it's standing upright. This is likely due to how the camera is working in game. The camera is pretty much ignoring whatever position the cockpit is in. So if we were following the cockpit position rather than the ship's position, if we decided to turn to the right, the ship would completely rotate around the center of the cockpit. But this doesn't happen in the game. You just turn around upside down and it still looks like it's upright. So that's how Rogue Squadron 2 is treating the B-Wing. Doesn't give us too many answers, unfortunately. And for the mods in Battlefront 1 and 2, it pretty much looks like that's how it behaves as well. So we pretty much get the same answers there as well, but it's still nice to have have multiple points of reference and as for the x-wing alliance it's pretty much hard to decipher exactly where the position of the ship is based on your cockpit and the reason i say that is because you can see in the cockpit that you're able to rotate completely to the side so x-wing alliance does seem to be ignoring the gyro cockpit as well because if the blog post is to be believed the gyro cockpit means that the pilot is always going to be upright. So it'll be very interesting to see how we'll be able to identify where our ship's position is and how that would affect our yaw and roll. I get it, it's a really hard thing to wrap your head around, but once we see gameplay of it, I think it'll explain pretty much everything we need to know. The reason I think they're including this into Star Wars Squadrons is because it's a justifiable nerf to hopefully make the ship a bit more balanced and playable in the game. The Y-Wing is the New Republic's only bomber in Star Wars Squadrons, for now. And with the introduction of the B-Wing, theoretically it should make the Y-Wing redundant. But I do believe they're going to make the B-Wing really difficult to pilot and maneuver, kind of adding in a different angle to the gameplay to hopefully justify the more powerful output the ship has. I kind of explained it a little bit with the TIE Defender in the previous video on how I hope to see that they'd actually remove some auxiliaries from the ship to justify a more bigger firepower on it so that it is still in some way balanced with the TIE Fighter, which means the TIE Fighter can have two auxiliaries, which gives more options for loadouts 
with the TIE Defender only having one and no power shunting, which could hopefully make it a bit more balanced. So that's how I see the approach being for the B-Wing, making the ship just really difficult to control and understand where the exterior of your ship is positioned. So a lot more pilot error tends to occur with the B-Wing than you would with the Y-Wing. Not only that, I do believe they're going to make the B-Wing even slower than the Y-Wing, just to kind of justify that this thing is super powerful, but also very easy to shoot down. This is already kind of true with the Y-Wing and the TIE Bomber. They are naturally slower ships, so it's a lot easier to hit them, but I do believe they're going to push this aspect even further with the B-Wing. So those two reasons alone, I think are big justifiable reasons to put a lot more firepower into the B-Wing. You're trading out speed, maneuverability, and adding in a stabilized cockpit that makes it a lot more harder to fly and get to objectives. But when you do get to that objective, it will be just like that scene from Star Wars Rebels and you just taking down that Arkazans with a meme cannon or whatever. We won't really get any answers until mid-December. That's when version 4.0 of the game does come out. And honestly, I don't think we'll see any gameplay up until the last one or two days before version 4.0 is released. Personally, for me, the stabilized cockpit is a really cool thing because it does mean that they'll have to change out how the gameplay works for this one particular ship. And honestly, I think that's super cool that they're even going ahead and adding that in. But what about your thoughts? I'm actually interested in how you think they'll be able to nerf the B-Wing to be playable in Star Wars Squadrons. Because remember guys, whilst the B-Wing technically does do a better job than the Y-Wing, as said in the blog post, there will be situations where the Y-Wing will be better than the B-Wing. That's where the whole balanced gameplay comes into play. So that will be my question of the day to you guys. How do you think they'll make the B-Wing balanced and playable in Star Wars Squadrons? I've tried to keep my answer more of an educated guess rather than an opinion. So if you can, I'd like to see your answers be the same. Don't give me your opinions on how it should be nerfed down. Give me your educated reasons about how they'll go about making it balanced. Those will be the most interesting for me. Just before we close out, in case you missed it, I did a video just like this for the TIE Defender on the Empire faction. That being the other ship that is also coming to Star Wars Squadrons. So if you want to check that out, that will be in the info card in the top right corner and in the pinned comment down below. But with that said and done, guys, I've been Charlie. You've been watching X2 and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.